The New York Islanders got off to another slow start, but this time the comeback falls short. They fall to the Nashville Predators 5-4. to four. We have our key takeaways from this game, plus a full preview of Saturday's game in Dallas against the Stars. All that and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Friday edition, weekend edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today and be part of the Locked On Islanders family. And Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So we have got a lot to discuss, a disappointing performance by the Islanders. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, a a topic that you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, feel free to send us an email. The email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is. That's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, N Y R V S N Y I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So I'll give you instant insight and analysis. And it's always great to interact with Islanders fans, both game time and anytime. So do feel free to get in touch and uh, talk a little Islanders hockey. Islanders fall to the Nashville Predators five to four in Nashville. And I'll, I'll say it this way. This game wasn't even as close as the final score indicated. And yet, in spite of it all, the Islanders had their chances to get back and tie or even win this game uh, in spite of the fact that they just played poorly, especially in the first half of the game. Bottom line for this team, you are not going to win consistently in the NHL playing 20 good minutes of hockey, 25 good minutes of hockey. The Islanders in the first 30 minutes of this game were thoroughly, thoroughly outplayed. And that was the reason that they were trailing just five minutes into the second period by a margin of four to one. And they did manage to claw their way back into the game. But by that time, it was too late. And here's the statistic that really got me going. 30 minutes into this game, as in halfway through the game, the Islanders forwards, all 12 of them who dressed for this contest had a grand total of four shots on goal. Four shots on goal by 12 forwards in half a hockey game. That is not a way to win a lot of games. In fact, it is a way to lose a lot of games. And even the goal the Islanders had in the first period by Adam Pellick kind of deflected in off a skate. It was a little bit lucky. The Islanders spent most of the first period, especially the first half of the first period, watching the Predators skate circles around them, watching the Predators move the puck, skate with speed, uh, create opportunities, and they more or less hung Ilya Sorokin out to dry. Not that Sorokin played an outstanding game. He had gave up five goals and 31 shots, but you can't just blame Sorokin here because this team was more of a spectator than a lot of us watching the game at home. And that is just maddening. You can't have that 
kind of a performance for half of a hockey game. And, you know, were there some bright spots? Yeah, there were a few. J.G. Pajot, Brock Nelson, both solid in the faceoff circle. J.G. Pajot had six hits, as did Matt Martin. But that's, you know, sort of the short list. And then the other encouraging thing, more than anything, this team didn't quit. But overall, it was too little too late on the comeback trail. And, you know, you get a goal from Clutterbuck, a goal from Palmieri, a goal from Pajot on the power play with 421 left in regulation, but they couldn't get any closer. And, yeah, they hit five posts in this game, five posts. So if one of those go in, uh, then we're talking about a game where, you know, we maybe tie it, two of them go in. Maybe you get to uh, to a win, a comeback win again. But when you think about this, in the third period, the Islanders outshot the Preds 16 to 3. That was impressive. The problem is that before that, the Islanders were outshot 28 to 17, and that's just not going to get the job done. Consistency is something this team needs more of. And uneven performances, like not showing up for the first 10 minutes of a game, being outplayed through 30 minutes for sure, you do that against good teams and you'll lose more often than not. And the fact that the Islanders have already had come from behind wins against teams like the Avalanche, the Rangers, and the Flames, and the Blue Jackets for that matter, but you know, the first three teams I mentioned are at least considered good to very good teams. You know, that's that's the exception. The rule is you fall behind four to one halfway through the hockey game, you're going to lose 90 something percent of the time. Lane Lambert's challenge right now for this team, and it's an important challenge, he needs to find a way to get this team to show up when the puck drops and not wait until, oh, wow, we're behind by two goals, three goals. We better wake up. Imagine if this Islander team gets up one nothing or 2-1 to one and is able to do what they do best, which is forecheck and smother you and, and clog up the neutral zone and prevent you from getting good scoring chances. You know, I always like to talk after a game about the shot chart. And you look at the shot chart here, four of the five goals scored by the Predators were from the high danger areas that you always want to get shots. And three of the four goals by the Islanders for that matter. But you cannot allow that many quality scoring chances, especially in the first two periods. This team needs to do better. I love the fact that they didn't quit, but you've got to do better than that if you hope to win hockey games consistently. And right now, you know, this team isn't doing that. We have got more to discuss on today's episode. We have some more takeaways from this game. We'll preview Saturday's game against the Dallas Stars, which quite honestly, right now is looking more important for this team. We'll have that and a whole lot more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you could find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Hey, Saturday's game against Dallas will be even more exciting if you have some skin in the game. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. 
Thanks for making Locked On Islanders your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So, again, just a disappointing performance for the Islanders. There were some bright spots. J.G. Pajot, I mentioned his face-off and physical game. He also had a goal and an assist, as did Adam Pellick, who had four shots on goal. Still, you know, one other thing that I'm going to mention, and I hate to call this guy out, but Oliver Wallstrom took another foolish minor penalty. Every game, it seems. Oliver Wallstrom takes a penalty. And most of the time, it's one of those lazy penalties, the kind you absolutely don't want to see. And, you know, Wally needs to stop taking penalties. He went through one stretch between the game against the Avalanche until the game against the Red Wings where he had a penalty in four straight games, then had one game without one, and then had another penalty, takes another one uh, last night. Can't do it. Can't keep taking penalties, especially when you're not on the ice for all that long as compared to a lot of your other forwards. Now, Wallstrom was on ice for 14 minutes and six seconds. He had the four shots on goal, but please, Wally, Stay out of the box. You can't afford it. We can't afford it. And this team needs to just be better right now uh, when, when it comes to all that. So let's see if the Islanders can get the job done on Saturday. And that's what we're going to discuss next. The Islanders heading to Dallas to take on the Stars. Dallas off to a solid start this year. They are 10, 5, and 2 on the season. They are in first place in the Central Division. And they are coming off a a 6-4 road win against the Florida Panthers. So that in and of itself, a big win against a quality opponent. And, you know, Jake Ottinger, their starting goalie who has been playing so very well, he got banged up. So we have to check on his status for the game. But coming into last night's game, Ottinger, 6-2-1, a 9-29 save percentage and a 2-1-2 goals against average. Scott Wedgwood, 3-3-1 actually with a 3-2-1 goals against average and a 9-0-3 save percentage. Jason Robertson has been the big Gun right now for Dallas, 11 goals, 25 points coming into the game last night, had an assist. And then uh, Rupi Hintz, who uh, has also been tearing it up for Dallas, he scored twice. He now has 22 points in 17 games, eight of those goals. And the Wiley veteran, former San Jose Shark Joe Pavelski, had Uh, A very strong start so far to the season. Pavelski, nine goals coming into last night's game. Did not score against Florida. But again, the, the, the old veteran getting it done for Dallas. Jamie Benn also playing well. And overall, the Stars, they're a physical team. They do a good job at both ends of the ice. Ottinger playing outstanding in goal. They are sixth in the league in goals against coming into last night's game and fourth in the league in goals scored. The power play, second in the league, 33.3% conversion rate. The penalty kill, third in the league, 85.1% conversion rate. The one thing that the Islanders need to do in this game, stay out of the penalty box. Oliver Wallstrom, do you hear me? Stay out out of the penalty box. Do not give this talented Dallas team that has speed, skill, size, and strength 
do not give them too many opportunities with the extra player. We'll talk about the line combinations. We mentioned all three players on the top line. Hints, Robertson and Pavelski, they are very dangerous. Tyler Sagan centers the second line with Mason Marchment and Matt, uh, Matty Blumel on his wings. Wyatt Johnston is the third line center. Jamie Benn to his left. Ty Delandrea to his right. And Radek Faxa is the fourth line pivot with Joel uh, Kivaranta and Luke Glendening on either side of him. Defensively, the veteran Ryan Suter and Miro Heiskinen are the top pair, Niels Lundqvist and Joel Hanley. The second pair, Asa Lindell and Yanni Hakenpa'a are the third pair. And then the goaltenders, Wedgwood and Ottinger, but it remains to be seen uh, on the health of Jake Ottinger. So we'll keep an eye on that and see whether or not he is available for the Dallas Stars when they face the Islanders on Saturday. Isles need to be better. They are not going to win in Dallas with a 30-minute effort. I can tell you that right now for certain because this is a good Dallas Stars team. Dallas is not an easy place for road teams to win. And the Stars, they are playing some very solid hockey as of late. Uh, you know, that it was important for them to split the two Florida games. They have won two of their last three. They lost a few games before that injury sort of taking their toll a little bit. But now they're a little more healthy and they're getting back on track. So Islanders going to need a smart penalty free or close to penalty free and, uh, just a, a more complete effort than what we've been seeing from these teams. And it's going to be interesting. Um, what do you do if you're Lane Lambert? Do you go with Ilya Sorokin, who has sort of been playing two out of every three games this year? Uh, you know, two for him, one for uh, Varlamov. Or do you go with Varley against Dallas? And then save Sorokin for the Eastern Conference game against Toronto, which is the fourth and final game of this four-game road trip, where, you know, if you can do that, it, it, it just makes a little bit more sense to me because, A, it gives, it gives your backup or, excuse me, it gives Sorokin more rest heading into Monday's game. And it, it, it allows your better goalie right now to play in the more meaningful game. Neither Dallas nor Toronto is an easy opponent, but we have to see what happens because the Islanders now facing three very dangerous scoring teams in their next three games. The Stars, the Maple Leafs, the Oilers, back to back to back uh, on the schedule. I mean, not three straight days, but three straight games against top offensive competition. So, Let's see how the Islanders handle that. I would go with Varley against Dallas and then go with Sorokin in the next two games against Edmonton and uh, Toronto and Edmonton. But let's see what Lane Lambert does. And again, feel free to, to chime in uh, with your opinion, uh, either via email or on Twitter or uh, in the comments on YouTube if you're watching the show there. We have got more to get to on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. We have our Islanders birthday of the day, a current Islander who is one of the more popular players on the roster. We've got that, plus some important closing thoughts about this road trip and the consistency of this team. All that and more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And today, Friday, is the 35th birthday of Islanders' right wing Cal Clutterbuck. Clutter, originally drafted by the Minnesota Wild in the third round way back in 2006 and made his NHL debut in the 07-08 season with two games with the Wild. Stayed with the Wild through the 2012-2013 season. Had a career high 19 goals 
and 34 points in 2010-2011 with Minnesota. Joined the Islanders in 2013-2014 and hasn't looked back. Big part of the identity line and a real leader in the locker room. Guys, look up to Cal Clutterbuck. He's 6 feet, 212 pounds. Not the tallest guy on the roster, but he's big. He's physical. He's not afraid to dig in the corners, to stand up for his teammates. And yet, he has only had one season of 100 or more penalty minutes in his career. And with the Islanders, he's never had more than 60 penalty minutes in a season. And again, that dates all the way back to 2013, 2014. So Clutter, not a dirty player. He's just a physical player. And he just you know, gives you that effort and helps set the tone for this team's success. We're going to go back and look at one of Cal Clutterbuck's better games as an Islander. March 16th, 2016 at the PNC Arena in Raleigh, Islanders taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. J.F. Barube, the goalie for the Islanders. Eddie Lack in goal for Carolina. Kyle Oposo gets the Isles on the board first, his 21st from Nikolai Kuhleman at 135. And then Kuhleman, his eighth, unassisted at 1555. Islanders up one, uh, excuse me, two to nothing after one period. In the second, though, Carolina strikes three times. Victor Rask, his 18th from Chris Terry and Brett, and Brett Pesci at 59 seconds. Jeff Skinner from Ron Hainsey and, and Jacob Slavin at 534, and then Jay McClement from Ryan Murphy at 801. So in seven minutes and two seconds, three goals by the Hurricanes and the Isles trail after 40 minutes by a score of three to two. But in the third, the Islanders quickly get back into it. Cal Clutterbuck, our Islanders' birthday of the day. His 14th from Casey Sezikis and Calvin DeHaan, just 30 seconds in. And then in overtime, Cal Clutterbuck. Gets the game winner, his second of the game, 15th of the year. Brock Nelson and Nick Letty get the helpers. Islanders win it in OT 4-3. to three. Barube with 33 saves. Islanders outshot 36-31 in this game. But for Cal Clutterbuck, two goals in this one. He was a plus two. And he had the game winner scoring on both of his shots. Played 14 minutes and four seconds of ice time. So happy 35th birthday to current Islander Cal Clutterbuck. Clutter is our Islanders birthday of the day. I'm concerned. I'm concerned about this team. I like the start overall that this team is having. I mean, if you would have told me that the Islanders would be 11 and 7 through 18 games, when the season started, I think I'd be pretty happy with it for the most part. But you want to have long-term success. you got to be more consistent. And right now, this team is not playing consistent hockey. The next three games, two on the road, one at home, all against very tough opponents. Lane Lambert needs this team to rise to the challenge. And let's see if they can do that. It all starts Saturday. And hopefully the Islanders will find a way. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll be back on Monday as we have our key takeaways from the game against Dallas. And we'll have a full preview of Monday night's game in Toronto where some guy named John something or other is the captain of the Maple Leafs. Always interesting when the Islanders go up against John Tavares. There will always be something there between the Islanders and Tavares. Fans eventually, I think, will understand, you know, not be so angry at JT all the time. And eventually, I think they'll appreciate what he did for this franchise when he was here. But overall, 
There's a little extra juice in those games, and we'll have a full preview of it on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend. Have a great day. Stay safe. And, of course, let's go Islanders.